treatments before and five or six after. It'll accelerate your healing process dramatically. Broken bones. Um, I had a, a young man that worked for us who broke his arm, and he was told that uh, he would be probably seven to eight weeks away from a complete healing. And uh, he went in the chamber every single day, and his bone was completely healed. His arm was back in shape in three and a half weeks. It sounds like these chambers need to be all over the country. Well, when I first started working with Dr. Neubauer a long time ago, there were 79 hyperbaric chambers in the United States. There are now about 1,500. Wow. And Dr. Neubauer was uh, very committed, as was I, to very slowly teach physicians about hyperbarics and encourage them to reach out and use it. And we uh, we did... Uh, programs with these doctors and we'd have dinner with them and I remember uh, we did this in London we did this in Scotland we did it in Romania uh, we even did some work in Africa um, but that didn't help the United States but over here in the United States Dr. Bruce Halstead helped us he was a, a pioneer in hyperbarics as well and now we have 1500 of them and we have a couple of uh, organizations that are promoting hyperbarics that are away from the standard medical uh, the the standard medical version of a hyperbaric society favors hospital chambers and hospital treatment and i don't really understand why um, maybe they the, think it's more official well you know they do but there's also the financial aspect of it which i sometimes mention sometimes not um, to preserve justification for $2,000 billing, and some hospitals are cheap, they're only uh, maybe 1200 1300 billing, compared to a billing of 200 or 195 there might be some interest in preserving that because too much competition is going to make, every, especially even the insurance companies will say, well, why are we paying the hospital so much when uh, when it's available in other places for Eighty percent less, or whatever, you know. I don't know. I have no clue. Of the countries in Europe, I'm just curious which countries so far have been the most receptive to this form of treatment. Well, China is big time. China is big time. Japan is very open minded. India has got some leaders over there in hyperbarics that are really pushing it. Um, Italy has a bunch of chambers, and their mentality is pretty incredible. Uh, Russia, though, is uh, Russia is really way ahead of everybody. In many well, things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And, of course, uh, you know, countries where they have socialized or nationalized medicine, uh, they have a real need to find things that work, that are efficient, that aren't horribly costly. And there doesn't seem to be the fear of loss of income for certain uh, medical groups or or medical treatments, they just go along with what works best and what's cheapest because they're paying for everybody's health care. I would think Germany would be really interested. Germany has chambers. Germany has chambers too. Germany's pretty pretty open minded uh, with a lot of things. They do a lot of ozonation over there as well. Uh, they have developed a machine over there, an ozonating machine that takes the blood out, ozonates it, and um, and puts it back in the body. And it uh, turns the blood into a form of oxidative medication. Sounds scary. That part sounds scary. <laughs> well, it's it's like everything else. It's got to be done properly, you know. You've had a ministry, haven't you? Yeah, for a long time. Can you talk a little bit about it? Well, yeah. The, most of our work has been uh, has been in foreign countries. Uh, we went to uh, Africa to Lelangui at the uh, the invitation of uh, the president. Uh, I think his name was Dr. Benda. He was a, a physician himself. We went over there and helped establish a program for the treatment of AIDS in a hospital called Hospital Cozumel. That was a long time ago. And we went to Romania in Bucharest and set up a program for the treatment of AIDS babies, which was very interesting to me. 
And we did a lot of work in Mexico and a lot of work in the United States with the homeless people and trying to help especially lower-income people develop ways of uh, eating better, um, understanding that some of what they were eating is poison and that they're responsible for their precious body, which is the most incredible gift, and that they could increase their health and uh, how they feel. And so those kinds of things we've done over the years. Is your ministry still going? Is this something that's still active? You know, it it is, but not to such a great extent. And, and one of the reasons why is that uh, a couple of us who are very, very active uh, have already gone to uh, another world. And a lot of my uh, energy and support that uh, I had to help me uh, is no longer available. And that's sad, and I'm too busy to do a whole lot about it. Do you travel much now? Well, I have, you know, a lot, and I'm trying to wind down and change things a bit. It's pretty important to do that. I know that you were with Whitaker Wellness, formerly. And yeah, we, we built there uh, one of the largest hyperbaric centers in the United States. We had the capacity there to treat, uh, we could treat comfortably probably 80 to 90 people a day if we needed to. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. And you're in beautiful Newport? Yeah, well, Newport Beach, and now I'm in uh, next door to Newport, which is Irvine, but it's... Uh, it's also all, very it's, pretty. Yeah, it's all the same area. What do you think about the radiation leaks that have come into America that have been downplayed but are still here? Well, they, they will dissipate um, pretty fast most of the time, but you have to know where they are. You know, are they, are they in food? Are they uh, are they in something that will share the radiation process and uh, expand it? Um, I I don't panic over it, uh, but I think that we should be checking all the food. I don't think we should allow things in from from uh, that area unless they're tested carefully. And it doesn't take much to test them. It's not a real costly thing. It's time consuming and and it costs money, but it's not horrific. Um, but but it scares me a little bit, but not overwhelmingly. I had to ask you about that because I was wondering how the hyperbaric work would dovetail into getting radiation out of the body. Or oh, it help. helps dr- dramatically, dramatically. It's uh, as I said, it's it's so dramatic that it is approved for reimbursement by insurance. And there aren't many things in hyperbarics that are improved for reimbursement of insurance. Almost everything we do is not. In terms of radiation, like for treatment of cancer, why is it used? I don't understand it. Well, because it kills cells and it stops them from uh, replicating appropriately. Um, Therefore, (laughs) you can kill cancer cells with radiation, but you can also damage soft tissue and uh, blood vessels and healthy cells. And so that's what you have to try to overcome. In the old forms of radiation, it was much more severe. Now there are, for example, Loma Linda University Medical Center has been working for uh, many years with a new program. I think it's called the Photon, Photon Program that just can pinpoint the use of radiation on a certain area, so it doesn't hurt areas surrounding. That's what you want to avoid, you know, to blast a tumor, which, by the way, you know, a lot of people look at a tumor as the cancer. It isn't. It's a manifestation of the cancer. It's a, it's a result of the cancer. It's a symptom, if you will, of the cancer. But the causes for the cancer need to be addressed as well. That's the reason it's important to deal with nutrition, what you put in your body, not exacerbate your your cells with a lot of stuff that they can't take. Um, going on a live diet, for example, can be helpful. Proper detoxification can be helpful. Getting rid of chemicals from your body can be helpful. All of those things are very, very important. But radiation is a damaging thing. If it's done indiscriminately and uh, if people get overexposed, they can... They can die. They can die a not-so-pleasant uh, death. I have a dear, dear friend of mine who has a tumor behind her nose, and she's being blasted daily, and she's so sick. 
from the treatment. I can't even tell you. And then they're giving her a super dose of 